update. I told my mom how jealous I am of my half-siblings and now she won't stop crying. I, 16 male, was born to my mom when she was 15 and I've never known my real dad. My mom didn't drop out of school or anything, and the year after I was born, she started dating Jack. And when they went to university, I obviously got left behind with my grandparents. Mom and Jack got good degrees, got married and moved to Vancouver. My mom's always been in my life. She would still come home every weekend, just to cuddle with me and would always give me these nicknames. But calling me her special guy was her favorite one. She'd always bring me back presents and gifts and spend the whole time playing with me. She's the one who paid for my tutoring, and after school stuff and would try and make it to games and stuff like that. Jack wouldn't always come with her, but it was always fun when he would. He's taken me fishing with him a lot of times and we even went camping for two weeks together once. But never again, because I hate camping. But when I was 10, my mom and Jack had a daughter and then another girl three years ago. I don't really know them, especially because my mom stopped coming over as much after they were born. We don't cuddle anymore, we did on my birthday, but that's it. No more cute nicknames for me except for special guy. It's like they all got transferred to her daughters. No more gifts and the worst part is, she doesn't come to my games anymore. It was okay with me before, because they still had a spare room in their house and I could go there when it's time for university. Yesterday, my mom FaceTimed and she had the big announcement that she was going to have another baby, and it was a boy. And now she'd have two special guys. I guess she saw how sour my face was, because she asked what's wrong. And I don't know, I just admitted how jealous I was that her daughters got her so much. And now her son was going to get her. There wouldn't even be space for me there when I had to go to university. And I guess what I said affected her because she started crying and wouldn't stop and had to hung up. My grandparents are mad that I made her upset and think I don't value them now or something. Jack phoned me and he's mad because my mom thinks it's a mistake now to have another kid. It also mad at me and he was like, why would I ever think they wouldn't have a room for me? I feel like I really messed up telling her that. And here I am at school writing about it on Reddit because I can't stop thinking about it. Now for the top comments before reading the update. I don't know why all the adults in your life are blaming you, a child, for your very valid feelings about this. They should be trying to make you feel more comfortable and included, rather than try to smother your genuine feelings. Your mom feels bad because she should. She's in her 30s now. There's no reason why she can't be around you anymore. There's no reason Opie should be living with his mother. If she's supporting her own family and having kids, the grandparents' time of raising Opie should be over now. I question why Opie's mom doesn't have him living with her. I was surprised when mom finished college, she didn't move her son into her home. No wonder he feels neglected. I feel like Jack played a big role in why he's not living with them. It's horrible when new partners don't accept children from previous relationships and treat them with love and respect. I understand that the children must also treat the new partner with love and respect. But adults are adults. Children are children. Some adults don't have maturity and so many stepchildren feel unloved. Why couldn't you move back once she graduated and started another family? She can't have her cake and eat it too. Unless the grandparents formally adopted him, then he is still her child. She passed the buck completely and her parents enabled her. Not helped. They enabled the abandonment. It baffles me how people can just leave kids and start completely new families. And now they've decided that he should have suffered in silence, so none of the adults are required to feel bad about what they've done. And now for the update. So I posted on Friday at school, and when I come home, my mom and Jack and their kids were already there talking to my grandparents. As soon as my mom saw me, she gave me such a big hug she actually lifted me up for a second, which is weird because I'm taller than her now, and then wouldn't stop kissing me on the face and telling me she loves me. I said hi to everyone, and my grandparents had my mom take me into my room to talk to me alone. In my room, she told me she was sorry that I felt like she'd been paying me less attention and that a new baby isn't going to replace me and I'd always be her special guy. I started crying so we weren't able to talk until I calmed down and then Jack came in and joined us. I just admitted that I felt like I wasn't that important to my mom anymore and if they were having a boy then there would be no point in them taking me when it's time for university. And then Jack left because he kind of started crying hearing me say that and that was weird. My mom told me that she wanted to take me when I was 13 and going into high school because she thought that was the best time to do it. 
except she argued with my grandparents about it a lot, and they said it was best if I stayed with them. Then when my mom took me to a game, she saw how much fun I was having with my friends and thought they were right. When I said I wanted to go to SFU, she and Jack were happy, because it meant I would be with them when I graduated. When I asked about the spare room that was meant to be mine, she admitted that they hadn't thought about what would be the baby's room and would have to figure something out since they aren't giving up my room. My mom told me she'd come and take me every weekend because she said it was wrong that she started paying less attention to me but thought it was okay because I was independent and had my grandparents. She said that she wanted me to spend my breaks with them as well. I don't want to leave my high school. But my mom said I could do that for my grad year if I wanted to move in with them earlier. I did have a talk with Jack too and he told me that he was glad I confessed everything and that his parents gotten mad at him for not telling me that when he called me. We did all have a fun weekend together, except my grandparents because they don't leave the house due to COVID. And I do want weekends to keep being like that. I don't know if I'm allowed to keep doing updates here, so this might be the only one. But hopefully this will help calm down everyone who keeps messaging this account for one. Seems like a lot of his grief could have been prevented if the adults had asked him if he wanted to remain with grandparents or go with mom, or even at least explain to him the reasoning behind him not going. Absolutely. I remember reading in the comments that their decision to keep him with his grandparents was supposedly fueled by a child psychologist recommending against removing him from the environment he was used to. But he was like 10 years old at that point. Shouldn't they have taken his opinion into consideration? Truly a sad situation for OP. I hope things turn out well for him. A psychologist told my parents to make me homeless when I was struggling as a teen. There are some bad ones out there. A psychologist told me a few weeks ago, during a first appointment by telephone where it was clear she was driving and not paying attention to me, that I couldn't have been diagnosed as being on the autism spectrum because I seemed fine to her and I just needed to go out and meet people. Then she recommended I read a book on Freud and ended the session 20 minutes early. So yeah, some therapists are absolute joke. I'm glad about the outcome, but I despise how the first reaction after a teen voicing their feelings is anger and guilt tripping from all adults involved. The kid is 16, voices how he feels and why, and stepdad gets mad, grandparents get mad and jealous. It's infuriating. Also, no one ever communicated with them. At least Opie learned that skill. I couldn't agree more. The poor kid was basically left alone to feel like he was the one who did something wrong when all he did was voice his very valid feelings. Every adult in the story, not just the mother, should seriously apologize to him for how they reacted to this whole thing. And I really hope they all learn to communicate with Opie better. It could have been just a choice of word by Opie. However, if his mom actually said, I'm sorry you feel like, that's a such a nahal thing to say. You're basically saying I don't agree with how you're feeling. I've read several posts of parents getting remarried and or having more offspring and just almost forgetting their first offspring exist. Like they think they can get a total do-over at being a parent and are Pikachu shocked with their offspring voice displeasure. Yes, lady, your son who you have kind of forgotten about is not gonna be exactly thrilled when you tell him you're gonna have another son when you barely interact with him as it is. Then in like a decade or two, the parents are gonna be shocked that their offspring wants nothing to do with them and just have no idea what they did wrong. Last story. I don't feel guilty about the loss of my sister's son. So I, female 24, was 7 or 8 at a time this happened. My older sister Susan, 37, was 20 or 21 and she had a newborn baby. Our mom was at work at a time, so it was me, my sister and the baby at home. We didn't have a dad and all of our relatives live in another country so we were at my sister's care. My sister was always someone who likes to go out with friends, to parties and wasn't often home, until she was pregnant and had the baby. So, she only could go out and have fun when our mom had a day off. Our mom was always understandable of my sister, being that she was now a single mom too as the baby's father bailed out and Susan missed her friends and her previous lifestyle, but was also angry sometimes because her day off was spent babysitting my sister's child, cleaning and cooking. And with time, there were more and more arguments, since my sister only cleaned her room and only cooked for herself. Sometimes, I tried to intervene, but my mom only sent me to my room. 
So this day, I remember I was watching the TV at a time, and Susan comes up to me and says that she's going out with her friend for only a couple of hours, and that I had to take care of the baby. I never liked babies, and no one bothered to teach me how to care for one. Only that they drink milk from a bottle and that they use diapers. I was a little shocked and scared, and said that she was supposed to take care of us, and I didn't know anything at all about babies. But my sister ignored me and told me to just take care of him. A little while later, the baby started crying, so I went to my sister's room and tried to figure out what he wanted, but started to freak out. I ran to the kitchen and tried to give him the bottle, but he didn't want it. I tried to give him toys, his blanket, and didn't want it. I tried everything I could think of at a time, but he only cried louder and louder. But I was getting more scared and ran to my room. I put on headphones and hid under the covers and hoped that either Susan or my mom would come home soon and fell asleep. When I woke up. My mom was already home and was calling Susan, screaming. But she didn't get home yet, and there was an ambulance. And I was really scared again because I understand nothing at a time. And my mom came up to me and hugged me and asked where Susan was. And I told her what happened. It was noon when my sister left, and early night when my mom came home. By the way, I could tell that she was angry, but tried to not show it. She asked if I knew where she was, but I didn't. And I asked her what happened, and she just told me not to worry, that everything was going to be okay. Later that night, my sister came home, and our mom lost it and screamed at her, and Susan screamed back, and so on. I couldn't handle all the screaming, so I was going to my room. But at that moment, I heard my sister and felt her grabbing my arm until it hurt. I got scared and started crying, and my sister was screaming at me too. I don't remember most of what she said, but I remember bits like "it was your fault" and "you're a little monster." Until my mom made her free me, and I ran to my room and locked the door. The days later, after that, Susan was cold and ignored me. She was either in her room or out, but when she was home, I was afraid of being left alone with her. So I began locking my bedroom door often until my mom was home. Things worsened when Susan came home smelling of alcohol and screaming at me to open my door sometimes. I never did because, again, I was terrified, and my mom had enough and kicked her out. A few months later, my mom got therapy for her and me separately. My mom never told me anything then about what happened, and I never saw my sister again until I was about 17. I used to ask my mom how she was, and she just told me that she was doing good. When I saw her again when she came home to visit, and I was a little bit in shock and on edge. I was glad to see her, of course. But also weirded out because I remembered how she treated me when I was younger. It was my mom's day off, so we were all in the kitchen talking about normal stuff like work, grades, relatives, etc. Until my sister, out of the blue, says that she thinks she deserves an apology. I was confused and didn't know if she was referring to me or mom. And Susan looks at me and says that I have to apologize to her for what happened. I ask what she was talking about, and my mom told my sister to get out. But Susan started to raise her voice and tell me to say sorry for what I did to her baby and that it was my fault that he died. My mom dragged her to the door and closed it when Susan was out, while I was still shocked and didn't know what to do or say. After that, my mom explained very briefly what happened and that they talked about reuniting us because Susan felt ready to see me again and wanted to make peace, but didn't expect that to happen. For the full story, she waited until I was 18 to tell me. So what happened was, while I was sleeping in my room, somehow the baby suffocated. My sister blames me for what happened because she left me in charge of him. My mom found him and called the ambulance, but it was too late. Blamed my sister for being irresponsible and leaving not only her little sister but her own child as well, just to go partying. For a while, I was still processing the info, but in the end, I understand that I was just a kid and didn't have any idea on how to do anything for a baby. And when I got overstimulated and stressed, I panicked and hid where I felt safe. However, my sister has been trying to contact me recently. She says it's because, like she told my mom, wants to reconnect and resolve this. I was on the fence about it because of the past experiences, so I talked about this to my mom and my therapist before doing anything. I relented at the end to meet with her, but only in a public place to make sure she doesn't do anything crazy. We went to a cafe, and again, like the previous time, everything was normal at the beginning. But after a bit of a small talk, my sister told me it was time that I apologize. I began to leave and pay for my part. Then I told her that there was nothing for me to apologize for. She tried to follow me, telling me awful stuff. 
again that it was my fault and I'm a murderer and hoped I never have children, and raised her voice more once we were outside. I ended up telling her that I couldn't care any more about her or her baby, that she was the irresponsible adult who left two children at home by themselves, and I didn't feel guilty about it because I knew it wasn't my fault her son died, that I only feel absolute apathy towards her, and to never contact me again. I then left as fast as I could because I couldn't stand being near her while she was screaming and crying. I admit I did feel bad about her and her baby before, but after this meeting, I had enough of her crap and her blaming a confused and scared child for the death of her son. When I got home, I told everything to my mom, and we agreed that if she tried anything, next time we called the police. So that's it. I just wanted to let all of this out. I tried to be as specific as I could from what I remember, what I've been told, and what I wrote in my diary at a time. Feel better now. Now for the comments. Her actions caused the death of her son and gave you trauma for life, and she had the audacity to say she hopes you never have children? She should have been prosecuted for neglect and child endangerment. Glad your mom is supporting you. You were a child. Your sister was the adult. She is 100% responsible for what happened. You were not. She's just trying to put the blame on you because she's too much of a coward to admit it was her fault. This. Who in their right mind leaves a baby behind with a 7 or 8 year old? especially without explaining them how to take care of a child. I mean, I basically raised my sister at age 10, which is still 2-3 to three years older than Opie's age. Though I was parentified, which isn't good, I was explained how to do it all before my baby sister was dumped on me. I was also a single mom at the age of 20, living with my own mom. I never really went out to party, but I did go out with friends a few times. But I never would have left my baby alone with a child, wouldn't even leave any of my kids alone to people who doesn't agree to take care of them, no matter their age. I have an 8-year-old son, 6-year-old daughter, and 10-month-old daughter. The most my older kids have to do is entertain baby for a couple of minutes while I prepare her food or when I go pee. 